Spencer is the one responsible for introducing me to high intensity training when I saw his famous DVD where he trains bodybuilder Marcus Reinhardt. I liked putting training DVDs on while I worked out, and his video was popular before all of the millions of hours of YouTube content existed. Most of the videos I would watch would be Joe Weider's split system that advocated high volume training. I didn't know there was any other way, but after watching the DVD, I realized that this was something totally different and it was exciting. I've watched that DVD at least 20 times or more at this point. Mike's knowledge about exercise was like nothing I had ever heard before. One set is difficult to digest for a volume trainer, but I could tell that Marcus Reinhardt was getting an amazing workout in a short amount of time. So I began my journey into high intensity training. But even after all of these years, and after I've applied Menser's and his mentor, Arthur Jones, principles, I actually have never done Menser's ideal bodybuilding split routine called heavy duty. I never followed it by the book, that is. I saw that the YouTuber Arian Meyer created a modified version of it that could be done once a week, so I gravitated towards that for a while after I had been doing Ken Hutchins' super slow full body routines. But the more I read Menser's writings, the more I wanted to try his program to the letter, or the best I could do in my home gym. So for this video, I will not be doing the routine from his later books or his consolidated routine, but his original idealized principled program from the original heavy duty book. And I want to show you how you can do all of these exercises at home. One thing I liked about the program was that back and chest are on separate days and legs are only once per cycle instead of twice. But after this, I might also try Menser's updated program or his consolidated routine to compare them. For the last six months or so, I've been doing this program as I wanted to give it a real try before making a video about it. According to Menser, the three workouts of the program should be staggered every four to seven days. I chose to work out every four days as the hardest thing for me to accept about a split routine was putting more time in between specific body parts. For example, the chest would only get worked out every 12 days or about twice a month. But it ended up not being a problem. 12 days rest was totally fine and my concerns were unwarranted. I didn't experiment very much with changing the days off. I did rest for seven days between training sessions a couple of times, and I didn't notice any decline, so perhaps someday I'll try putting my recovery ability to the test and wait seven days between every workout. If I get the same results doing that, then this routine will be even more useful to me, as the time saved by doing HIT was the number one factor that got me to try it in the first place. I had also never done a routine that was specifically for bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is not a sport, as its practitioners claim, but it is definitely an art form where the trainee sculpts his or her muscles with targeted exercises in order to get a more aesthetic looking physique. I work out primarily for the long term health benefits and to be stronger than I am naturally, but I will admit that looking good in the mirror is also a nice advantage and I wanted to focus more on that. The ideal routine hits all of the major muscle groups so that you can achieve an attractive, well-rounded appearance. I should mention that this is a more advanced bodybuilding program and people who are obese or elderly would be better off doing a super slow Ken Hutchins style full body workout once a week. So far in this video I have been demonstrating the first workout which is chest and shoulders. Another thing I like about the split routine is that workouts are briefer than a full body routine. I can be done in 15 minutes. Obviously when I'm recording myself for a video it takes a little bit longer. This workout entails only three supersets and then you're done. I do not rest in between the first or second half of the superset and then also try to limit my rest between the supersets because HIT involves a cardio workout. Arthur Jones said that no more than three seconds should be used to move between the first and second half of the superset. So for me to move from the pec deck to the chest press while changing the weight pin on the way takes me exactly three seconds. I got a comment from a HIIT practitioner who said that pre-exhausting his chest doesn't work for him because then he has nothing left for the bench press. So it's only working his shoulders and triceps. I have to chalk this up to genetic differences. My pecs have always been my strong point, my arms and shoulders are my weak points. So this pre-exhaust superset works really well for me personally. I feel failure all over my upper body at once, I love it.
The second superset is for shoulders. So to do this exercise, you begin with a lateral raise. I use a cable, but you can also use a dumbbell. The second part, which is a compound movement, is best done with a reverse Nautilus pec deck fly machine, which I do not own, but my body solid machine can do a reverse pec deck fly if you only do one shoulder at a time. Since my lateral cable raise can only do one arm at a time as well, this works for me. The downside is that it does add a little extra time to the routine, as it does for my leg curls, because of machine limitations, but you work with what you got. It still beats driving to a gym. If you do not have a reverse pec deck machine, then you can just do a reverse deltoid fly or a bent over lateral raise with dumbbells. Shoulders have always been a weak point for me. I've been trying for years to build them up with limited progress. But I do like that this heavy duty routine is clearly getting all three deltoid heads worked. I accept that I'll never have a bodybuilder's masculine developed shoulders without steroids. In fact, that is the easiest way to spot a drug user. Overly large and round shoulders, which usually go with overly large developed traps. Menser mentioned Larry Scott as a bodybuilder who overcame genetic shortfalls and achieved rounded capped shoulders with training. But that's bullshit. He achieved them with steroids. I should also mention that I do not do warm-up sets. So this is where I stick to Ken Hutchins' recommendation of using the first few reps of a set as the warm-up. If you do that, then there is no need for a separate set. I do think that Hutchins made a significant improvement to high intensity training by integrating a 10-10 cadence, completely eliminating momentum, increasing intensity, and making the exercises safe enough that even a frail grandmother can do them. So if anyone in the comments wants to recommend 2-4 or 4-4 or whatever, that's fine, but please also include a good reason why. So I have fully rested now for four days. I try not to exert myself too much in the meantime. I do no cardio and I work a desk job. Workout two was back and biceps. I started out with another superset, this time with an isolation exercise for the lats. If you do not have a cable machine, then you can accomplish this pullover with a dumbbell or a curl bar on a flat bench. So for this superset, unfortunately, I must not only change the plate in between the two parts, but must also change out the handle. So that takes another second. But they are very close together, so I can still get to the next part of this set in about three seconds. This compound pull down works the lats as well as the biceps. I'll usually do a rest pause at the end of the set to fully exhaust the muscles. Then, as directed by Menser, I moved to the floor for seated rows. To protect my hands, I'll sometimes use these wrist straps. I also use them for the traps exercise, which comes next. 50 pound dumbbells are working better for me than a cable for shrugs, so I just do as many reps as possible, performing them slowly. And because I can't do that many, I rest for 10 seconds and do a few more. Now comes the lower back. The most interesting machine that I used at the super slow zone was the MedX lumbar extension machine. 
My trainer said that it usually becomes most of her clients' favorite exercise, and I have to admit that I really liked it. Other than doing deadlifts, I never really worked that muscle group. But by the end of my training, my back muscles were thick and full. It's not a muscle that anyone except your wife is going to notice, but as I had never isolated this muscle group before, I loved seeing such impressive results. So I knew that I wanted to keep working this area at home, but the question is how? I will do a separate video about the different ways to uh, do this at home, but for my heavy duty workouts I decided to use a Roman chair. This is one of three bodyweight exercises I will be performing in this program. I first read about using a Roman chair from the high intensity book The Power of 10, 10 being the 10 second cadence that I used. It's not as safe or as effective as a MedX machine, but then again nothing else is, and that machine costs thousands of dollars. You could of course just do a deadlift as well, even though it is not an isolation exercise. Menser was a big fan of the deadlift. I personally have never liked the exercise, I always feel like I'm going to hurt myself. As shown in Power of 10, you can even uh, do hyperextensions on the floor without any equipment at all. Up next is a bicep superset to complement the earlier bicep work on the cable pulldowns. I start out with pull-ups, which is another bodyweight exercise I have never really used before with any regularity. I never really worked out my forearms at all, and it showed. When starting this, I couldn't even do one pull-up. Now I'm up to five. The way I accomplished it was through negative-only training. I stepped on a box to raise myself up, and then slowly lowered myself. It worked really well, and within a couple of weeks I could do one clean pull-up. Then, over the months of training, I went up to 2, 3, and now 5. I still end with as many negative reps as I can before I sprint back to my preacher bench uh, to do barbell curls. As you can see, I have a resistance band attached to the bar to give me some uh, progressive resistance. Then, when I can't do another set, I just remove the band and keep going. If I feel like my biceps are lagging, I'll then either do a rest pause or a drop set. This heavy-duty routine has worked my biceps just as well as any other system I've ever used, including five sets of high-volume reps. The peak on the head of the biceps sticks out very prominently now. Four days later, I am ready for what I feel is the hardest workout, legs. I don't always cry out in pain during an exercise, but I usually do for the leg extension leg press superset. To me, if you can walk easily after this, then you haven't done it correctly. It usually takes me the rest of the day to recover. My trainer left a tip on my pre-exhaustion video that I should be using a seat belt to stop my ass from riding up out of the seat. For fat people, this probably isn't much of an issue, but I'm not a big guy. So I just used an old ammo belt and wrapped it around the seat. It works great. Taking it off does take an extra second though. I also have to change the pin and step over to the leg press. It takes about four seconds. I'm also making sure not to lock out at the static point of the exercise per my coach's instructions. I always do a rest pause to push my quads as far as they will go and do the final negative very, very slowly, as slow as I can. After this, I take very little rest and move on to the leg curls. This is another exercise that I've never really loved, but it's in Menser's program, so I'm doing it. As with the reverse pec deck, I can only do this one appendage at a time. Then I go back to the leg press station for calf raises.
This all goes fairly quickly, so then there is some time to do abs, as recommended by Menser. I switch up my ab exercises. Sometimes I use the body solid machine for a weighted crunch, but usually I just do crunches on the floor. Super slow, of course. One set until I can't do any more. Because this is a bodybuilding program, I wanted to take it seriously, so I also dieted down while doing it. I knew at a young age that I would never be an athlete, and definitely had no chance of being a bodybuilder. At best, I could try to look like Bruce Lee, who was my height, 5'7". I currently weigh 130 pounds, so since I've been dieting, I have lost about 5 pounds, mostly fat. I do sloppily keep records of my weight, reps, and time under load, but I really like to use Frank Zane's method of just looking in the mirror and taking photos to observe my progress. This is a bodybuilding routine after all. Actually, since I work without a spotter, I find taping myself to be the perfect way to judge each workout and my progress. This is a comparison of my body now against what I looked like when I was doing Ariane Meyer's full body routine about six months ago. I should probably stifle some expectations here as well by saying that you are never going to look like Mike Menzer. Not ever. It doesn't matter if you use HIT, or if you grow a mustache, or if you inject anabolic steroids. He was a genetic freak. One in a million. Even his own brother with very similar genetics didn't quite look as good. Menser was a real-life He-Man, and his incredible physique has turned many people onto high-intensity training. But when I saw him in his final video, he was an unhealthy, broken-down shell of his former self. Yet yeah, I was so impressed by his knowledge and experience that made me become an instant fan and student. His body will always be admired, and will probably inspire comic book artists for years to come. But it's his research and publications about high-intensity training that will outlast any accomplishments he made on the bodybuilding stage. Thanks for watching this workout tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments section. And good luck with your training.